What's up guys, it's Chuck from Brady Adventures and today we're going to talk about awnings and the selection we made for our 100 series overland rig. Hey, this is real life people. This is real drama. Bless you. <laughs> That's real drama. If you enjoy the video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. For years we've used the expandable canopies that you get from places like Walmart, put those on our roof or in the back of our vehicle and they're heavy and a pain in the butt to set up. We really wanted to get a vehicle mounted awning. Started looking around and of course the ARB awning is one that a lot of people get. It's pretty expensive compared to those canopies but it's one of the cheaper overland awnings that mounts to your vehicle. We also looked at things like the Batwing that provides larger 270 degree coverage. In a lot of situations setting up the something like the ARB awning or the Batwing uh, with stakes and guidelines is gonna be just fine. The way you would stake is just really simple, right? Ta -da. But this is really hard ground. It's those times where you need to set up quickly or those times where you wanna move your vehicle. Once you put those lines in the ground, it's kind of a pain in the butt to do that. And in windy conditions, it can be a real, real challenge. And then eventually we came to the shadow on. It also provides 270 degree coverage like the Batwing, but it doesn't require poles and it has an extremely quick setup. <laughs> another, <laughs> another thing we really liked about the shadow on was the fact that they produced custom mounts specifically for the front runner roof rack. Um, that was a rack that we had looked at, we're really interested in because of the flexibility of the mounts. That, made the shadow on really a no-brainer for us. All right, so how, how does this connect? <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Matt and McKenzie will be like, we just did this. <laughs> so you slide it on here. Um, these tracks, you can slide nuts or bolts into it and then they'll thread up in there and they won't spin because they're just wide enough. Gotcha. Um, so it takes advantage of that. Um, on this particular side, there's two bolts that'll go all the way through. Then this one right here. You said you have to drill the holes for this. You have to drill right? holes for these two, yep. Gotcha. And they'll come through and you tighten them down. And then this one will use this existing stock bolt that holds the back right. rail. Right. And then on the top here, there'll be two bolts that go down into there. They'll be nuts this track right here. So the, the front um, mount just has two holes that you drill all the way through and that'll go down there. The cool thing is I think once I have the whole thing mounted up, Mm -hmm. to take the awning off, I'll basically just have to undo these bolts and I can pull the mounts and right. the awning off together pretty easily and then slide it back up there without gotcha. too much. Now the Shadow On is a lot more expensive, about three times the price of the ARB, has a lot more coverage, but it's also about twice the price of a Batwing. But let me tell you, the flexibility of it and the ease of setup and breakdown really, really make it worth it. So there is a new entrant to the market. Kinsman Hardware and Blue Ridge Overland are working on a freestanding 270 degree awning. That will probably be a strong competitor to the Shadow On, but at the time when we were looking, that didn't exist. Keep an eye on them because it's probably going to be something that's pretty nice. Yeah! Do you know what's in this giant box? Fusha? Nope. An awning. Okay. Hey, do you know what awning? You know the big one that wraps all the way around? The shadow on? No. No. <laughs> so real quick, I want to break and talk about shipping of expensive overland gear. I've had a number of things shipped to me now and each item that is large and required freight shipping ended up having some kind of damage to the packaging. Well in the Shadow On in particular there was actually some damage to the item and it was a real pain to get UPS uh, to work with me on that. Actually OK Four Wheel Drive did a really good job of helping me out and I went ahead and kept it but I just want everyone to know if you see any damage on the outside make sure you look and make sure there's no damage to your gear inside. You need to do that before the shipper actually leaves your premises and make sure you know any kind of damage at all uh, on the paperwork that you sign and give back to them and that you keep a copy of that as well. That's going to protect you if you need to make any kind of claims. 
Hey guys, thanks a lot for checking us out. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to our channel and please let us know if you have any questions about the awning that we chose or anything else that we've done to our Overland Bridge. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And always feel free to leave us any comments or questions that you might have.